everyone welcome to your lockdown cooking class every week we'll bring you four short recipes to get the best out of your kitchen marvel the, Th the thermomix tm6 this week we'll do a wild garlic pesto by sarah litmenden wild garlic is in season so that's a great recipe to do then we have um, caramelized onions which is a high temperature recipe with the tm6 uh, done by sarah board and then we have ghee or clarified butter by Amy Mita and I will do a sous vide salmon with apple and fennel salad. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm the Thermix Advisor for the Essex area. Um, I've been an advisor for two years now and whilst using my Thermix nearly every day it hasn't been used quite so much as it has in the last few weeks um, whilst we've been on lockdown. I have five adults in the house and the phone mix is basically used from morning until night time and um, starting off with iced coffees in the morning. Um, I'm going to show you a quick recipe today. I'm lucky enough that I have um, stumbled across some wild garlic whilst on a walk yesterday and realised that I could make my pesto with the wild garlic. So I'm going to show you. So this is this is my ingredients. So we have the wild garlic, which has been washed very well, so as not to give anyone any bugs or anything. Some Parmesan cheese, some salt, some pine nuts, and um, some olive oil and a garlic um, clove. So I'm going to show you. This is the Thermomix. And if I don't know if um, if you're not familiar with the with the Thermomix. This is just going to turn it on and I'll talk you through it. So when it comes on, this Thermomix is the TM6 and has been around um, since last June. Um, it has, it has uh, many, many features, different modes. Um, you can cook so many things with it. So the basic functions are time, temperature and speed. And that's really, that's all you need to know when you're using a Thermomix. And um, we're gonna use the guided cooking recipe. We're gonna go through to the cookie do, which is the software that holds over 50,000 recipes. So that's just loading at the moment because I've only just turned it on. I'm going to type in um, pesto, as that's what I'd like to cook. And it will give me all the all the options for pesto. Now I would like to to cook the basil pesto, but we're going to replace the basil with the wild garlic. So on here it will tell me what the ingredients are that I need and some of the instruction and all the instructions too. We're going to start cooking following the guided cooking. So it says to place it will weigh it too. So we're going to tear that. We're going to place in the Thermomix the Parmesan in, um, that's been cut into small chunks. Um, I did weigh it earlier, but uh, it's almost there. We'll, we'll call that 80 grams. <laughs> and we're going to say next. It says insert the measuring cup, which we have. Next, and it's going to do it for 15 seconds, and we're going to do it up to speed 10. 15 seconds I'll show you um, how that's grated the parmesan so from the blocks of parmesan we now have grated parmesan so you can use that on pastas and everything else that you like to use so it now says to put in 30 grams of pine nuts this is my 30 grams of pine nuts 29 it's almost so now we're going to do one clove of garlic, which is optional, but I like that in my pesto, so I'm going to pop it. That says um, 80 grams of fresh basil leaves. But we, of course, we're going to use the wild garlic. So we're going to put just the leaves into the burner mix. Eighty grams we have there. Do next. So 
this to add 150 grams of extra virgin olive oil. We're going to put that in and it will weigh it. It does look like a lot of olive oil, but it makes very, very tasty pesto. And once you've had this, you will not want any out of the jar over again. half a teaspoon of salt which we have here so it's all gone into the bowl into the jug it says to insert the measuring cup again so we have that. and it says 20 seconds and it says to turn it to speed seven Next, and that says serve as a sauce, transfer to a jar with a twist of lid, off lid, and store in a refrigerator. Now that I'll show you. This is how it looks, and this will be such such delicious pesto. Um, you won't get better than that, and it will keep for up to say a week in the fridge. It's delicious. Um, I hope hope that's been interesting for you so that you can see there are other options and um, not just relying on what you can get every or at the supermarket and also it takes a minute in the in the thermomix instead of using your pestle and mortar and everything anyway i hope you enjoyed it and um, thank you for coming into my kitchen and i'll see you soon thank you Hi, my name's Sarah and I'm a Thermomix advisor. I have owned a Thermomix for three years now and can say I honestly use it every day, at least twice a day. Um, I'm a mum of one, soon to be two, and my daughter is a very good eater. I've had it since she was born and we eat a variety of meals, very nutritious, homemade, everything from scratch. Um, so this is the TM6 and today we are going to be using one of the um, great features of the TM6 which is cooking at high temperatures and we're going to be doing um, uh, caramelised onions. So um, I can either find my recipe by searching on Cookie Do from the front of the screen or I can go into my saved recipes um, by my week which I have already created to um, make life easier so that I knew what I was doing. So as you can see, I've made these two um, recipes today. We had uh, Asian style rice for dinner. So now I'm gonna do the caramelized onions because I'd like to make some chutney. So we just click on it. And as you can see, it comes up clearly with the recipe and it will give you all of the ingredients down the side and then all of the instructions that you go through step by step. So we are just going to start cooking. So I always take my lid off and make sure that it has, the scales have gone to zero. So it's saying place 20 grams of olive oil into our Thermomix bowls. And as you can see, the scales are very precise and quite sensitive. So they go up straight away as the oil is going in. So there we've got 20 grams of oil and then we just press next. Now I've already prepared and chopped up my onions so I'm just going to add them in and see how they weigh. As you can see the scale is going up. Okay moving on next place splash guard onto mixing bowl lid to prevent splashing. So that's going to be the splash guard that I'm going to get next and that just sits on top and we press done. And as you can see, this is the function that shows us that it's going to be cooking at a high temperature for 20 minutes and we're just going to set it off and leave it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is done, it'll beep and we come back. So as you can see from the top, looking in very quickly before it has started cooking, it's on the go already, getting warmer. So after 20 minutes, we'll come back and we'll check that. So we are coming to the end of the caramelized onions recipe. 
It's just cooling down for eight seconds and then we will hear it ding and we can see the finished result. It smells amazing. The sizzle just sounds amazing as well. Um, make sure that when you are doing things like this, open your lid away from you because that steam coming up is very hot. So as you can see, we've got our beautiful caramelized onions. Very easy, very little for us to do. It's all with the Thermomix. Hi, how is everyone on this beautiful sunny day and what is everyone up to? Okay, so like you can see, me and my team have decided to do a few basic handy Thermomix things. Um, I particularly chose this because again, with my Indian cookery, with whatever I do with my dinner parties and uh, I need I need ghee. I do use ghee a lot. So it's just recently been discovered as a superfood. So I'm really happy to share it with everyone. Uh, Okay, so that's 250 gram unsalted butter, which is what we have. You can take any butter. To be honest, my favorite, I used to do anchor for forever, but my favorite is Kerrygold. Oh my God, the ghee with that is just delicious. It's one of the best ghees you would have had. Okay, so once you have your butter inside, just insert the measuring cup. Next, 10 minutes. And it just decides the speed, which is very less. And that's it. It's just going to prepare the ghee in 10 minutes. There you go. The lovely thing is here. It's done the 10 minutes. Magic. My ghee is ready. Oh, it's so hot. Now oh. the ghee is a bit cooler. I'm just going to drain it and pour it into my... That's it, my ghee is ready. How easy was this? I hope you enjoyed watching this and try it. Thank you. I'm Shez um, and I've been an advisor for seven years now. I've used the Thermomix TM31, TM5 and now a TM6. So um, I'm, I really love using the product, have done for many years. Um, and we have a fantastic team in Northeast London and Essex. Um, and you'll see that you would have seen the rest of the recipes as well and met some of the team members. Hopefully you'll see us every week with this lockdown cooking class. To start the recipe, we'll find it on the menu. So click on the menu. I'll just bring my camera closer and click on my week. Um, and I have the recipe saved on cook today salmon with fennel and apple salad click on that um, and then I I have all the ingredients ready here and I'll start the recipe start cooking so we will make the the recipe starts with the dressing first so it's a teaspoon of Dijon mustard next about half a teaspoon of salt so I've got sea salt here um, 10 grams of olive oil. Oops. A little bit more. Doesn't matter. Olive oil is good for you. Um, and a sprig of fresh dill. So I had this in the freezer. So it's a little bit lame, but um, it can still be used. Um, and 20 grams of fresh lemon juice or freshly squeezed lemon juice. Tear my scales out. There we go. And we'll emulsify that. So insert the lid onto the measuring cup. Lid and it's 20 seconds, speed five. Okay, the instruction on the screen is to transfer this emulsion or this dressing into into a bowl it, 
It then says clean the mixing bowl. So just do a quick rinse. You can of course do a self clean on the function screen. So if I um, go to the home screen, it will save this recipe that I'm working with and swipe left and I've got the function screen. And if I bring up the pre-clean, I can wash this with two drops of liquid and about a litre of water and it will work out how dirty the blades are and clean according to the time required. Uh, but I've just given it a rinse for now and I'll continue with the recipe. So I clicked on the, the book or the, the marker and it's taken me back to exactly where we were with the recipe. Yes. Um, so it says season two pieces of salmon and these are the two pieces of salmon I had. I didn't have any bigger slices, but that's fine. Um, and it says season it with salt and pepper. So just adding some salt and pepper to this on both sides. The, I like using sea salt and the pepper is also ground in the Thermomix. I never use pepper that's bought. Um, it's all ground in the Thermomix as well. And then, and then, oh sorry, and then it says it, some lemon zest and no, with no piss and the remaining dill leaves. So the remaining dill leaves that I have go into a, um, into the salmon as well. So I'm just going to put it on the top there. And click next. So then it says place each salmon piece in a Ziploc bag, which I have here. I've reused these IKEA bags and I'll show you how to use um, just tap water to Ziploc it or vacuum seal it so you don't need a, a fancy gadget to seal your bag. Um, and I'm going to put one piece of salmon inside. I also have it also said to place one salmon fillet in the Ziploc bag, uh, gives you dimensions for that a teaspoon of olive oil and also a piece of some lemon zest on the previous it said spice it with lemon zest and I'm just going to show you how to make lemon zest in the thermomix at the same time so I've got some lemon peel here just peeled with a very sharp knife so that it only has the lemon and no pith white pith or use a very sharp peeler and it will peel the lemon quite nicely wash your lemon dry it and then peel it so I'm going to put all this lemon in there and get some zest out so that I can um, season my salmon fillet with that so um, I'll go back to there so that I can get back to my recipe I'm going to the home screen and I'm just waiting that up for a few seconds <laughs> should be done and I've transferred the two salmon into my Ziploc bag and I'll scrape out the lemon zest If my bowl was dry, I would have got smaller pieces on this, but uh, my bowl was slightly wet. So it doesn't matter, we're just flavouring the salmon in the, in the bag while it's soupy. There you go, you've got the piece of um, salmon flavoured with seasoned and flavoured with dill and lemon zest. Go back to my recipe it then says fill a sink or a large container with water which i have here and i hope i can show this to you properly but what happens is the pressure of the water so you submerge the bag slowly into the water and the pressure the water pressure seals the bag as you immerse it into the water you leave three centimeters over the top Hello, we continue with the recipe, uh, sous vide salmon, and the 15 minutes are up. Um, it heated that water to for 15 minutes at 55, and next it says insert the basket. And um, uh, earlier I said we're not using the basket because I have the, the blade cover that I'm going to pop in um, all the way to the bottom.
Oops. Just checking that it's secure. that the blade cover is secure um, and then you immerse the fish or the vacuum sealed fish bags inside until it's all covered make sure it's covered and then next and then we have and I'm going to put it on for 45 minutes so I'll come back with, at the end of the 45 minutes when I'm serving or when I'm finishing off the salmon fillets in um, a, a fried uh, in a pan with butter. I'll see you once the 45 minutes are done so we're just going to put that on and it will continue um, for 45 minutes. Thank you. Hi I'm back with um, the sous vide salmon and apple and felon salad and that's all done. Um, so I mixed the dressing that we made in the beginning of the recipe into sliced apple and fennel and red onion um, and fried in a hot pan with a bit of butter um, till the salmon fillets were crispy so that's your sous vide salmon with apple and fennel salad um, sous vide salmon is not um, it, you know, it's something that you, you would think is not really necessary but the texture and the taste is amazing um, and do try out the other uh, sous vide recipe so there's sous vide rare meat I've got another one saved here um, Eric, um, sous vide rare beef steak with Bernay sauce are there sous vide octopus sous vide vegetable sous vide fruit um, it makes a, a welcome difference to um, your normal cooking and steaming as well because um, it cooks at a lower temperature so the, the, the salmon was cooked at 55 degrees and so will the steak just for a longer time and um, so you'll get that rare inside um, and then brown it off on the outside the taste the steak is amazing do try it out thanks a lot bye